RB Leipzig are a very interesting case. For years, they've been knocking at the door of the Bundesliga elite without being able to break it down. And now, with the German club looking to take the next step in their development, they've brought me in to take over and finally win some silverware. Now, RB Leipzig have always been a team that have been focused on developing from within. Evidenced by the fact that the likes of Joshua Kimmich, Christopher Nkunku, Deot Pamakano, Gavardio, as well as Ibrahima Kanate and Dominic Zabotza, just to name a few, all plied their trade for RB Leipzig at some point in their career before moving on to a bigger team. And with us having some really exciting young talent on our books already, the likes of Danny Olmo, Xavi Simmons, Luis Openda, and even the 19-year-old Benjamin Sesko, the focus of trying to develop young talent at the club on this career mode is going to be no different. Now, in real life, RB Leipzig utilised this more narrow 4-2-2-2 formation, and I think it's something that I would like to continue to utilise here on the start of this career mode. However, of course, in typical German style, we're going to move away from this standard tactical vision more towards this high pressure Gagan pressing style to hopefully suffocate the opposition. Now the reason this team are able to utilise this more narrow formation is due to the attacking players that we've got at our disposal. If we look at the likes of one of our best players in Danny Almo, he has that something special and he has the capability to be that creative spark for us this season, along with the youngster Xavi Simmons on loan from RB Leipzig at PSG. Let's see how he performs this season and let's see whether or not I might want to make that move permanent come the end of the season. However, in addition to those two, we've also got two other central attacking midfielders Fielders, one being Eljif Elmas, the North Macedonian, just 23 years of age, also has that something special at 80 rated, as well as the Austrian Christoph Baumgartner. They are all such special talents, and we've got to try and see if we can find some way of keeping them all happy as the season progresses. The 23 year old Louis Opender is going to be the main man to lead the charge for me up front, and at just 23 years of age, but already 83 rated, he could well turn into one of the best strikers in the world. And whilst the 29 year old Dane Yusuf Paulson is set up on this career mode as to be his striking partner, at the moment, I'm slightly more interested in the 20-year-old Benjamin Sesko. He's got the same rating, 77 overall, and he is a very exciting prospect and someone whom I'm hoping can potentially form a formidable partnership up front with this man, Luis Appender. Now, with me having the likes of Angelino out on loan and only having a 73-rated Christopher Lentz, whose contract expires in 12 months in reserve at left-back, it realistically means David Raum is the only option I've got on that side of my defence. And with Benjamin Hendricks being the only option I've got on the right-hand side of my defence, it seems like it's going to be this area of the pitch that I'm going to have to try and see if I can improve at the beginning of this transfer window. And with me having £79 million to spend, I think it's time to get down to work. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, my aim here is not necessarily to bring in massive senior players who are going to come in and potentially rock the boat, but to look to try and bring in some younger players who can grow and develop their talent here at RB Leipzig. And so we're going to be starting off with a man who I believe has the potential to be a world-class talent in the future. He's someone who's got experience playing at the highest level for Feyenoord in the Dutch league, racking up almost 50 appearances and now after making his way through the Dutch youth ranks is starting to make his way into the big leagues into the national team however with him being eager to test himself at the highest level and try and ply his trade away from Netherlands he is moving to Germany in a swap deal with Christopher Lentz for a fee of 12.4 million pounds now the board are delighted because I've signed a player of a different nationality to the club and I'm delighted as well because I've signed a player who's not only showing great potential but at 77 rated and having brilliant stats right across the board, I believe he is someone who can immediately come in and challenge this man, David Round, for a spot in our starting eleven. And with a little bit of an improvement to his training development plan, it may not be too long before we see him start ahead of the 25-year-old German. Now, with one signing down, it's time to move on to number two. And as you can see, I've got even more young players here to choose from. Now, after signing one Dutch international, I was hoping to see if I could add another young one to my ranks on the other side of my defence. However, as you can see, my top target, Divine Wrench, has already been snapped up by my German rivals, Borussia Dortmund, and that means he is off my shortlist for good. And with my other top priority, the 20-year-old 80-rated Arnau Martinez being completely off limits by his parents' club, it means I'm down to only a few different options left. However, with RB Leipzig having some clear connections with our sister club, RB Salzburg in Austria, it seemed like my third target was going to be a certainty to join the club. And that is why I am happy to announce, finally, we have managed to bring in another right back. This time, it's a Mardelli for six million pounds. Now obviously at 73 rated he's not exactly going to come and pull up trees and he's not at the moment going to challenge this man Benjamin Hendricks for a starting spot in my starting 11 but with him only being 20 years of age and him showing great potential and with him having some fairly decent stats especially on the physical side plus with him starting to feature more for his national side Bosnia he's another player whom I'm thinking with the right development plan could potentially turn into a world-class talent here at RB Leipzig. Now with two rather modest transfers down and we're still with 59 million pounds left in the transfer budget. It's
it's time to turn my attention to another area of my team. Now, I did mention I had some concerns in my defence, particularly in the wide areas. However, centrally, with my club captain and leader of men, Willie Auburn, at 83 rated, holding together my defence in the centre, as well as having the likes of Lucas Klosterman in reserve, as well as the young 23-year-old Mohamed Simakan, who once again, I believe, could potentially develop into a world-class talent, as well as his French compatriot, Castello Lukeva, who's showing great potential. At the moment, I think I'm fairly happy with the options that I've got in the heart of my defence. However, slightly further up the pitch in central midfield is an area of the team that potentially I think I could develop. Yes, I've got this man, Nicolas Sivald, at 22 years of age, only 76 rated, who does have a very bright future at the club, as well as having the 81 Austrian Javier Zlager. I'm not convinced that the 32-year-old 78 rated Kevin Campbell is the long-term option for the club. And I'm also questioning at just 79 rated, is there a potential opportunity to try and improve on a Hamadou Adara in midfield? Now, as you can see, I have shortlisted several options myself, but however, this is the moment that I'm going to need your guys' help to decide who is going to come in and try and improve my centre in midfield. Of course, I've still got a colossal amount of money remaining to spend, but let me know down in the comments below who you would like me to see bring in to play in central midfield for this club and who you would like to see playing in an RB Leipzig shirt this season. And with the Slovenian departing the club ahead of the start of the new season, leaving to Italian side Fiorentina for £11 million, it makes it even more important that I bring someone in to try and replace him in midfield. Speaking of the start of the season, though, it is it's time to start off pre-season and finally get to grips with managing this massive German club and finally give the players an opportunity to show what they can do in front of the RB Leipzig fans. But after conceding a sloppy goal inside the opening 25 minutes, one that I would argue my goalkeeper really should have saved, perhaps it's a position that I hadn't even considered before that I need to look slightly closer at. And whilst it looks like Luis Appender and Benjamin Sesko are going to be forming a formidable partnership, it seems like Sesko still needs to find his shooting boots and give himself a little bit more confidence in front of goal after missing a wonderful opportunity. However, on a more positive note, it does seem like our most creative player, the Spaniard Danny Olmo, is ready to absolutely electrify the RB Leipzig crowd if that goal is anything to show for. Going round two players straight down the left hand side, cutting inside and smashing a ball home into the far corner. Danny Olmo looks alive and ready to hit the ground running ahead of the new season. Now, I mentioned in wide areas of defence, I had some concerns ahead of the new season, but in goal was not one of them. The 33-year-old Peter Gualacci at 82 rated is in his prime, and I thought he would be an experienced figure between the sticks. However, with his form being poor, and if that poor showing in pre-season is anything to go by, perhaps his German reserve, Yanis Blasvich, might get an opportunity sooner rather than later. Or perhaps I might have to look to my scouts to see if they can find any free goalkeepers on the market, or potentially turn to to you guys watching to see if you've got any suggestions instead. So let me know what you think. Should I give this man Peter Gualacci a little bit more time to cement himself as our number one goalkeeper? Or should I potentially try and see if I can bring someone in to replace him? Let me know down below what you think. Now, I mentioned towards the start of the episode, the overall tactical vision is obviously to press high. But I didn't go into any more detail other than that. I think defensively, I'm pretty comfortable with the width of my defence and how high we're going to be pressing. And I'm pretty confident with a fast build-up play, playing direct passing as much as we can. However, as we are playing a more narrow 4-2-2-2 formation, I'm just going to curtail this width a little bit more and also try and get as many players in the box as I possibly can to try and utilise all the attack players we've got at our disposal. Now creatively Danny Olmo is obviously going to be the most important player in this team so I want to make sure he's getting in the box for every crossing opportunity but I also want to offer him a little bit more freedom to be able to roam around the pitch and try and pick out some decent positions in key areas. With me playing so narrow it's absolutely imperative that both of my fullbacks push on and overlap at every single opportunity as well. Plus with Lewis Appender having absolutely lightning speed I want to make sure that I'm stretching the defence. He's getting in behind to hopefully latch on to some of these balls that the likes of Danny Olmo and Javi Simmons are going to play through to him. The leader of men, Willie Auburn, of course, will retain the captaincy. And also, with him having a £43.3 million release clause, and with me not wanting to get caught out by any other clubs sniffing around before the end of the transfer window, I've decided to offer him a new contract, getting rid of that release clause from the get-go, and of course giving him a nice little salary bump to boot, which obviously he is delighted to accept. It doesn't add any additional length to his contract, but it does make his future secure and make sure that he will not leave this club under any terms other than mine. However, with the players and the fans itching to get the season underway it is finally time under the lights to start my first game as manager of RB Leipzig and my word what a game it's going to be in the German Super Cup against our German rivals Bayern Munich and the starting 11 for my first competitive game as manager of RB Leipzig looks a little bit like this Gulacci keeps his place in goal Henriks, Simikan, Orban and Raum start in defence Schlager's partnered by Hadara in midfield Xavi Simmons Danny Olmo play just behind the two strikers Benjamin Sesko and Appendo up front but here we go 
then the start of a new dawn and a new era at RB Leipzig. Can we start off this brand new career with our very first piece of silverware in our very first game? Let's find out. Simican. Simican to bring the one out of defence and he finds Lewis Appenda. Lovely little ball around the corner into Javi Simmons. And Javi Simmons, though, is being tracked well, though, by the Bayern Munich defence. But lovely, lovely ball into Appenda. Back into Idara. Big save from Manuel Neuer. But it's a brilliant start so far here in the opening 10 minutes for RB Leipzig. We had a corner and it's fallen now to Haidara into Simakan. Simakan though goes and gives it away to Harry Kane but he's got the pace to track back. That is exactly what I want from the French international. Out to Raum on the left hand side into Dani Almo. The creative spark here for RB Leipzig. Turns it around the corner into Benjamin Sesko. Lovely ball into Raum. Raum's going to throw this one into the box. Look at Haidara again with the head and I almost thought Dani Almo was going to be able to get on the end of that but Manuel Neuer read it well and collects easily. Simakan. Out to Schlager, into Danny Olmo, really nicely done here, and Danny Olmo turns again. Everything is going through the Spaniard here today so far. Danny Olmo down the line into Appenda. Appenda's going to surely try and look to go around the outside, but instead Kingsley Komen cuts him off, and Harry Kane now to bring it out for Bayern Munich. Into Harry Kane again, Musiala now. This is going to be the first opportunity for Bayern Munich to try and assert their authority and their muscle here in this game, and to try and see if they can find a way into my half, which they do. Sane into Harry Kane, blocked off though by Simakan. It's been a brilliant start from the Frenchman. Musiala now, who's come deep to try and see if he can get involved in the play here for Bayern Munich and try and see if he can spark some sort of a life into this attack. As Musiala now goes into the box, gives it to Harry Kane, and Harry Kane has it. And that is not the sort of time and space you want to give the world-class Englishman as he makes us pay inside the opening 35 minutes. It's given to him on a plate. He's still had a lot of work to do, though, with his left foot, but just inside the box, smashed an early strike past the goalkeeper, gave him no chance whatsoever. And frustratingly for us, Bayern Munich take the lead here in the German Super Cup. Dilix for Bayern Munich at the beginning of this second half. A frustrating way to end the first as I actually thought we were the better team, but we didn't take our chances. And of course, uh, club, the size and strength of Bayern Munich will make you pay if you don't do those things. But Benjamin Sesko now has the opportunity to try and get the scores back on level terms, but doesn't take it, smashes it against the defender instead. Sane. Into Musiala. Musiala into Kane. Blocked off again by Simakan, though. Those two having a real ding dong battle so far in this game. Xavi Simmons turns onto his right and tries to ghost his way into the edge of the penalty area. He does manage to find his way into the penalty area. Can he cut it back? Yes, he can. I was looking for the ball into a pender. Just couldn't find him. In the end, it was really good defending from Bayern Munich. And now Kingsley Komen is going to bring this one away. Looking to hit us on the counter attack. He's been chased down by Slager, but he's got the pace to just get away from him. Cuts it back into the path of Conrad Leimer. Now it's Musiala who lines up a strike. This time it's a good save from the goalkeeper. Well, with 25 minutes remaining on the clock here I'm gonna to have to be a little bit more adventurous and that is why I am bringing on some more attack minded players but Bayern Munich do not care one bit as they take the corner and Lima has it on the edge of the box into Kim Min-Jae Sane lines up a strike and in the end it's blocked off by the goalkeeper yet again we're living life on the edge here we have to make sure that we can regain our composure to try and see if we can find a way back into this game Danny Olmo into Hartman on as a substitute goes back to the defender Auburn gives it into that man Baumgartner who's just come on as a sub he's going to try and see if he can wriggle away from a couple of different challenges but it's just so condemned and so narrow and packed in the midfield there. We can't seem to wriggle away. And we can't seem to fashion a decent opportunity here in the second half. Kingsley Coman can't go past Henricks. Really good defending from the young man. And he's going to try and play a ball down the channel into a pender. And a pender now. Can he try and cut this one back into Benjamin Sesko? What a strike. What a goal. It was too powerful for Manuel Neuer. And just like that, the young man has got us back on level terms here with just five minutes remaining on the clock. Well, those tactical tweaks coming to fruition. Luis Openda stretching the defence, running down the channel and managed to just cut a ball into the more deep line Benjamin Sesko who on the first time shot just rattled it past the goalkeeper to get us back on level terms one all less than five minutes remaining on the clock here now for one of these two teams to try and see if they can find a breakthrough at the moment with Bayern Munich having the ball in my half it looks like it's going to come from the German Giants Harry Kane though into Joshua Kimmich goes out to Kingsley Coman has he straight offside much to my relief he has and with that chance being the last one of the final 90 minutes it means that now we look like we are about to go down to penalties in our very first game as manager of RB Leipzig. And so here we go, then it is going to be Luis Openda who's going to be the first man to step up here. I'm going to go to the bottom left, but it's saved by Manuel Neuer. And that is not the start we would have wanted. Harry Kane sends me the wrong way, but then goes and smashes the post. What on earth is going on in the opening two penalties here? Danny Almo to take, goes straight down the middle, and Manuel Neuer reads it like a book. This time it's Joshua Kimmich, does send me the wrong way yet again. And Bayern Munich take the lead here in this penalty shootout. Once again, with Christoph Baumgartner, I'm going to 
go straight down the middle and finally we get on the score sheet and that will hopefully calm the nerves of both the RB Leipzig players and the fans alike as we do go the right way this time but there's just too much height and power on that one from Kingsley Coman and in the end Bayern Munich take a 2-1 lead and this time we go straight down the middle with Benjamin Sesko it's 2-2 but Bayern Munich with the extra penalty have the advantage and once again it's just the eyes that are deceiving me every single time but this is the moment this is the penalty it's Hendricks who's going to step up here I'm going to try and put this to the top left hand corner it does not matter it doesn't go into the top left because it does go into the back of the net but this time it's going to be Alfonso Davies the Canadian who's going to step up here and try and see if he can beat Gualachi here can he send me the wrong way yes he does and frustratingly Bayern Munich win the penalty shootout and they are the team that are going to win the first trophy of the season. It's heartbreak for RB Leipzig, but we are brought crashing back down to earth with the reality of what we're going to have to contend with this season. We gave it our all, and we were so unfortunate. We showed character, heart, and determination to draw the scores level with just five minutes remaining. But just the extra class and experience of Bayern Munich is enough to help them lift the German Super Cup as they are the team to win the first trophy of this season. It's real disappointment for us as over the course of the 90 minutes I actually thought we were the better team but it just goes to show with me now having £78 million to spend with the departure of this man Kevin Kampf to Florentina it's money we're going to have to spend very wisely if we want to improve the squad in the right areas ahead of the new season. Now at the beginning of this episode I made a pledge that I was going to try and do everything I can to harness and develop some of the young talent we have at the club and that includes looking no closer than our own youth academy however as you can see looking at some of the players and the potential ratings of some of these players there isn't exactly a lot for me to choose from and so with that in mind and with me looking to try and see if I can hire some of the two best young scouts on the market and with me obviously wanting to set up a scouting network of course in our home country of Germany let me know down below what you want me to do with these two remaining scouts do you want me to stick to Europe to try and see if I can find the best young talent here or should I go further overseas maybe to Asia maybe over to Australia or even over to South or North America what sort of young talent do you want to see plying their trade here in an RB Leipzig shirt let me know what you think. However, for now, though, it is finally time to get back to the football and finally start our journey here in the Bundesliga as we are going to be opening up our campaign against Xavi Alonso's high-flying Bayern Leverkusen away from home. I'm sticking with the same starting eleven that lost on penalties to Bayern Munich in the Cup. I felt like over the course of the 90 minutes we were the better team and these players deserve the opportunity to start this season for me. So here we go then. They're riding high in the league in real life, but can we put a stop to that in our opening game? game here in the Bundesliga against Leverkusen it's time to find out into Schlager Schlager takes it on really nicely and is looking for the ball into Appenda Appenda around the corner looking for the run of Xavi Simmons takes it on can Xavi Simmons hit it with the first time blocked off by Tapsoba we've got an early corner here inside the opening five minutes that Ram is going to be the man to take and he's going to throw it in in the in swinger I was looking for the head of one of my defenders couldn't quite find him though but Ram will pick up the ball again and it's Xavi Simmons once again looking for an angle to try and pile the ball in and in the end Danny Olmo is just shrugged off the ball and by Leverkusen get it clear Adley now for Leverkusen twisting away from the challenge of Auburn but Auburn's done enough to hold him up in the end he has to go to the edge of the box and Michel Mario with the strike straight at the goalkeeper bit of a let off for us there Gavi Simmons into Haidara really nicely done and now the young man can stretch his legs and go forward into the path of Appenda back into Sesco and Sesco's touch just let him down there there was the run of Danny Olmo behind him and he just couldn't find him but now Leverkusen have got the opportunity to try and see if they can hit us on the counter attack Aria yet again goes out to the left hand side to Boniface Boniface is blocked off though by Henriks and now Xavi Simmons can bring it forward. End-to-end -end stuff here in Germany in the opening 25 minutes of this game. Xavi Simmons, lovely ball into Benjamin Sesko. Sesko again was just looking for the run of Luis Appenda this time. But once again, his touch let him down. And he's got to do better up front if he wants to try and claim his spot in our starting 11. Throws this one right the way over into the path of Ram and knots it down really nicely into Danny Almo. And Danny Almo takes it on. Lovely little ball back into Benjamin Sesko. who's going to surely try and look for the run of Appenda. Trying to stretch the defence. And Appenda's done a really good job but taps over. Just too big and powerful for him wins the ball back now Leverkusen once again can try and hit us on the counter it's Palacios into Adley Adley out to Teller on the right hand side Teller's going to try and see if he can go past Realm here he can go past Realm really nicely done and into Adley again Adley has he got options he does have one at the back post can he try and find him Auburn does well to hold him up but Palacios still has it in the box and this time they make no mistake right on the stroke of the 40th minute Bayern Leverkusen take the lead here at the Bay Arena. Once again, our lackluster display up front has really come back to bite us as Bayern Leverkusen finally carve out a decent opportunity and they just lifted it into the top of my goal. Could my goalkeeper have done better? 
Perhaps it's a little bit of a tough ask from that range. He could have got a hand to it, but frustratingly for me, he didn't. And Leverkusen lead 1-0. Into Simakan. We came from behind in our first game against Bayern Munich inside the opening 90 minutes. It looks like we're going to have to do the same here at the start of the second half against Bayern Leverkusen. But giving the ball away and just allowing them to play it out from the back is not the sort of start we would want. Boniface, though, plays it over the top. Lovely ball into Teller, who takes it down on his chest and plays a nice ball into the channel. But Auburn was there in the right place at the right time. Into Benjamin Sesco again. Just not quick enough here in the final third. Into a pender. A pender now back into Sesco. Sesco's looking for some sort of option up ahead of him. It's poor from the young man. He's got to do better if he wants to cement his spot in our starting 11. Lovely ball over the top, though. Aria has the beating of round, but no, he doesn't. Good defensive recovery from the young man. Boniface blocked off by Schlager. Really nicely done. And now Lewis Appender has the opportunity to stretch his legs, and he's got the pace to do so as well. But instead, he's going to cut it back into the unmarked Javi Simmons, who plays it into Sesco. Sesco is just trying to bundle his way through. Can he make it all the way? Tough ask for the young man. He tried his best, but just couldn't make his way through. That's stubborn by Leverkusen defence. Nice ball into Aria yet again. Into Teller now. And Teller has got the space to run into here. And he manages to ghost past Ram on the left-hand side. Auburn's going to come across to try and cover. Doesn't do a good enough job. Aria has it again. And this time lifts it over. Into Baumgartner on as a substitute as I try and see if I can find some sort of creative spark on this team. Ram goes in field looking for Paulson, who's also on as a sub in place of uh, Benjamin Sesco. And he finds a ball into Ram. What on earth was Ram doing there? I was trying to put a challenge in. I hit the wrong button and it just is symptomatic of our display so far. A really poor one, especially in the second half. Danny Olmo comes deep into Schlager. Schlager looking for the run up ahead of him. Does manage to find the run of Christoph Baumgartner who lays it, tries to lay it down to Yavi Simmons. But again, we just can't seem to find our men here. Adley now has it. Adley goes past Auburn who just takes him out. And he's going to be a very lucky man here. Hopefully, he won't pick up a red card as he was the last man, but it seems like he doesn't. Bayern Leverkusen have a free kick here inside our half. They take it short to Kasunu. Kasunu gives it to Puerta. Only a minute, a few minutes, sorry, a moment remaining on this game. But Christoph Baumgartner wins the ball back in a really good position. And now, can he try and see if he can play a ball into the onrushing run of Lewis Appender, who took it really nicely, but he just can't get past Kasunu. That is pretty much the story of this game. That Bayern Leverkusen defence have held firm, and they've held on to a clean sheet here as the referee blows for full time. Baumgartner shakes his head in disbelief. It's been a really poor display all round and a really poor way to start our Bundesliga campaign. At the end of full time, it finishes Leverkusen 1, RB Leipzig 0. It's a frustrating loss to take in our opening league game. And it's one that drops us to just two points off of the bottom place in the Bundesliga. I've got to be honest though, although we have the players for this system, I am really struggling with this more narrow 4-2-2-2. It's not the sort of system that I usually like to play. And as you can tell, I'm not able to get the sort of performances out of these players that I am hoping for. Now, obviously we are only a couple of games in and one game into the start of our Bundesliga campaign so I don't want to make any rash decisions and I don't want to change anything up too much just yet but if it's going to take more and more time for these players to try and lift their performances I might have to look to changing our vision sooner rather than later. However with us about to play our final game of this very first episode it's time to see whether or not we can finish a little bit better than we started as we're going to get our first opportunity to play our first game in front of our home fans here at the Red Bull Arena as we face off against Stuttgart and a game that we have to win. I've made only one change to my starting 11 and that is bringing in Elmas in central midfield in place of Haidara who drops to the bench as I look to try and see if I can add a little bit more creativity to my midfield. Nice ball into Danny Almo who's come deep to try and collect and Danny Almo plays a wonderful ball into Ram. Ram into a pender. Tried to find Benjamin Sesco. Just couldn't get the ball right. If he did we would have been in there. Wu Yong into Gurassi now who goes out to Mitchell on the left hand side Mitchell's going to try and go past our right back Henriks but Henriks with a thumping challenge exactly what you would want and does a really good job of just getting the ball clear now Elmas with his first opportunity to try and see what he can try and do here in an RB Leipzig shirt this season under my management and now it's a Pender who's got the ball a Pender looks for Benjamin Sesco Sesco's got the opportunity to finally find the back of the net and he does just that he's the first man to open his account this season for RB Leipzig we lead 1-0 here inside the opening 15 minutes. Well, that is just what the doctor ordered. My two strikers combining together. And Sesco on the edge of the box smashed it home with his left foot to give us what I think is a much-deserved 1-0 lead. Wu Yong tries to play it out wide to Silas. Does play it out wide and Silas has got the uh, the trickery to try and get away from Ram. Does a good enough job of keeping hold of possession. Karasor now into Wu Yong yet again. Wu Yong plays it into Silla. 
Now, Stuttgart are trying to see if they can find a way back into this game immediately. And once again, they do. And once again, it's poor goalkeeping by Gualachi. What on earth was he doing? He should not have been beaten at his near post from that angle. Well, it's not just the angle, it's the distance away as well. On the edge of the box, a first-time shot. He's got to do better from there. It's really poor goalkeeping. And that is not what we need when we just take the lead. It's one all. Danny Almo, in his effort to try and get himself involved in this game, has come very deep here. Gives it to Auburn. Auburn into Schlager. Schlager into Elmas, who turns really nicely. Plays a ball into Luis Appenda. Can Appenda find... Ah, I was looking for the run of Danny Almo, but instead Raum has it. And he strikes, and it's a good save from the German goalkeeper, Neubel, in the end. It's going to be that man, Raum, to take the resulting corner. He's going to fire it in, looking for the head of Danny Almo. But in the end, it was good defending from the goal scorer. And he manages to hack the ball clear. Raum has it once again. Turns it around the corner into Luis Appenda. Appenda is going to look for the ball out wide into Henriks. Can Henriks try and find his way into the box? He can. Cuts it in field. Looking for the ball into Sesco, inches away from finding him good defending once again. Well, we're knocking at the door here right on the stroke of half time. Yet again, we're going to have another corner and yet again it's thrown in. Yet again, though, we can't seem to find our way into the back of the net. But we are going to have another corner. I'm going to try the same trick, but this time I'm going to try and put a little bit more height and a little bit more power on this one. Thrown into the box, this time to the edge of the six-yard box, but it's easy for the goalkeeper in the end. Nice short pass into Carazor. Carazor gives it away to Elmas, who's done a really good job of winning that one back. And then goes and gives it away. Symptomatic of our poor performance across this entire episode so far. Furich now has it for Stuttgart. Tries to play it into the edge of the box. Somehow manages to bundle his way through. And in the end, we get away with one. It's a horrendous strike as the referee blows the half time. We breathe a sigh of relief. Well, nothing to separate these two teams as we begin the second half. We had the better opportunities. But once again, we've been unable to take them. We've got to make a change here in the second 45. Javi Simmons wins it high and he's going to play it down the channel into Lewis Appender, who's managed to keep himself offside. Lewis Appender to strike and Lewis Appender manages to find the back of the net. That is exactly the sort of start we would have hoped for here in the second half. Well, I meant to say that he kept himself onside and he did a wonderful job of doing that. Timed his run to perfection and he used that pace to drive away from the defenders and he just had the accuracy and the composure to pick his spot past the goalkeeper to get us back in the lead 2-1 but well, we just have to make sure that we can keep hold of this victory nothing silly here from the RB Leipzig players keep our calmness keep our professionalism and see if we can get the job done and just as I say that we almost give the ball away in a very dangerous position but fortunately enough we've managed to resurrect the situation and Sesco now plays it into Danny Olmo who plays a lovely ball into Openda and he's got the opportunity now to storm into the box to strike for his second Frustrating though, doesn't manage to find the back of the net. Going to be a corner yet again that this time Ram is going to take. I'm going to look for the penalty spot here, trying to see if I can find a crowded area. It's played into Simakan on his head, who just puts it wide. Well, I really feel like we need this third goal. We have to put some separation between ourselves and Stuttgart because anything can happen here in the last 30 minutes. As Henrik's now up from right back, has a nice opportunity to play it through to Danny Armo, who just can't get there ahead of the defender. Haidara on as a substitute, wins the ball back high up the field. Really good job from the young man. And now Xavi Simmons can bring this one away into the path of Paul also on as a substitute he's on his left and goes to strike big save from the goalkeeper well, we are getting closer and closer and closer to that elusive third goal that will put some daylight between ourselves and Stuttgart can we finally get it as Poulsen manages to drive his header into the bottom left hand corner and the answer is yes we can and is that the nail in the Stuttgart coffin that helps us bring home the three points here today we finally found our mark it was that corner technique that seems to have worked high and Poulsen on as a substitute managed to rise above the defenders that is a colossal header just when I needed there to be a colossal header past the goalkeeper 3-1 Javi Simmons into Haidara we are sensing blood here and we're sensing a real opportunity to add some all important space to our goal difference as a pender now plays it out to the right hand side into Hendricks Javi Simmons tried to play it across to Poulsen just couldn't find the mark but in the end it does not matter because with Stuttgart unable to carve out any other opportunities as the game ended the referee called time and we finally get our first three points of the season and our first win under our belt that man Paulson giving us the goal that helped to secure a 3-1 victory at full time it was wonderful to see all three of my strikers get on the score sheet for the first time in the Bundesliga this season and it's also wonderful to see that win lift us right the way up the table into fourth spot and now we can finally start our season. And so that brings an end to this opening episode in this RB Leipzig career mode. I hope you have enjoyed it. But as I said before, we have £72 million now left to spend in the transfer budget. Let me know what players you want to see plying their trade in an RB Leipzig shirt this season. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.